People look at stories through different lenses. I have my own personal take on some of these trending issues. Hi, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to In Case You Missed It. The Trinidad and Tobago National Women's Senior Football Team has appointed a new interim head coach as they get set to face Panama in two international friendlies next week. Do the ladies have what it takes to qualify for the FIFA World Cup in 2023? Are they prepared for the challenge? Hello and welcome to another edition of In Case You Missed It. This week, I'm pleased to be joined by Trinidad and Tobago senior footballer Lauren Hutchinson, who will be looking back at one of this week's major stories with me. Welcome, Lauren. Hey, how's it going? Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. How does it feel to be back with Trinidad and Tobago's national football setup? It's a blessing. Uh, you know, it, it's always an honor. I've been, you know, with the team for 11 years now. <laughs> yeah. It was just yesterday that I was 19 joining the program. Um, so it's always an honor and it's always an exciting environment when I'm around. My team. Yeah, and of course, that leads me to my next question. What brought you back to Trinidad and Tobago? Oh my goodness. Um, passion. Uh, you know, the, the love of the game and the love for, you know, my country and my teammates. Um, I was retired for, for three years and I was just working in my business here in the United States. And, you know, I got a call from one of my old coaches, Joe, who's now the manager. And she's like, Lauren, we're not done yet. So <laughs> here I am. I'm back and um, I'm very excited. And I'm pretty sure Trinidad and Tobago, um, the football loving public, will be very happy to have you back. What will be your key role, though, in the TNT setup? Yeah. Um, my, my biggest asset is my energy. My role is to come in and make an, in, an impact on, you know, staff members, new members of the team, older members of the team, and myself. I'm, I'm the teammate that, you know, when we're, when we're down or when we're struggling, to give it the positive energy that we need to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Um, yeah. I might not be the most technical or the fastest or the biggest or whatever, but I am the best energy for the team and I'm the best teammate that you can have. And we are definitely feeling that energy already. Well, you, <laughs> you were a part of the TNT team that missed out on qualification for the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup. There yeah. must be that extra inner motivation to ensure that there's no repeat of that again. Yeah, uh, it's all about learning from our mistakes. And that was my first big, big run. Um, you know, that was, oh my goodness, I guess almost eight years ago now. Um, to learn from the details of what, what do we do right and what did we need to do more of to improve. So now that's what we're bringing here. We're trying to make sure we're taking care of our bodies more, having more, more national team camps before games. And now that FIFA and CONCACAF has given us more friendlies, we have now an opportunity that we never had before, which is playing international matches before going into tournament. Yeah, and Lauren, you know, the news about the resignation of the former TNT head coach, uh, James yeah. Thomas, how did you receive that? You know, I was sad, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's about getting uh, curious before we get furious. Um, he was so good. You know, we were so sad to see him go, but at the same time, as a player, I need to, you know, really focus on just what's in front of me, which is the game. A few teammates and I, you know, we spoke and it's all about, we are the, the ones that are in the system constantly. Coaches are going to come and go. Admin is going to come and go. Fans are going to come and go. We are the players that are going to be there all the time. And it's just about saying, OK, this is just another bump in the road. Can we stay focused enough to um, stay focused on you know what we're trying to achieve, which is qualifying? But it was sad. You know, we, yeah. we really like and I think that's a really good way to look at it. Well, the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association, they've been very timely and you now have a new interim coach to work with, former Trinidad and Tobago futsal coach Constantine Constin. He's been appointed. How excited are you to work with the new coach? <laughs> you know, it's interesting you say that because I think I've had at least eight to ten different national team coaches wow. and the, the biggest thing that my parents taught me growing up and my mentors taught me is what can you learn from somebody 
doesn't matter if they're great, they're bad, they're indifferent, they're different from you, they're the same as you. What can you learn? You can always learn one thing from anybody that you meet in your life. So I know that anytime I have a new encounter with a new coach, a new teammate, I will learn something and I will take it in to my current life and in my future life. So I'm excited to see what he brings to the program and I'm excited to see what I can learn from him. Well, you did tell me that you're the energy booster and yeah. you know, the more I talk to you, the more I'm getting that sense. Lauren, what differentiates this Trinidad and Tobago team from teams you've played with in the past? Because, you know, you would have been involved with football internationally. So what's the difference? I think there's a few different differences. Number one, because FIFA and CONCACAF has given us more games to play in, the, the sport has grown over the last 10 years on the women's side. So before we went into the system playing the United States, barely having a camp, maybe two days, no games before, now we've had two full camps, two full games before we even enter the lowest level of CONCACAF. And then the highest level of CONCACAF is not for another eight months. So number one, we are preparing now eight, nine months in advance. That's never really happened. Yeah. The second thing that I love is the more attention to detail for the players. So now staying at the home of football with you know the right food, um, to training in the stadiums, to you know, higher level equipment, we now have access to the tools and the resources that we need to really perform and train at the highest level possible. Yeah, and that's definitely the direction we want to be heading. So speaking about CONCACAF, there has yeah. been the introduction of the expanded World Cup system, which gives smaller countries like Trinidad and Tobago the opportunity to qualify for the World Cup. Do you right. welcome this new format? You know, what do you think about it? 100%. It's so nice. <laughs> like I said, we used, to just, we used to just walk in with no camps and no preparation. So I like how it's now a little bit more spread out. In the past, it was just jam-packed. Yeah. It's completely jam-packed. You play game, 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 game. You were flying from country to country, and then you were qualifying within, you know, less than, oh my goodness, a few weeks. Yeah. Now we have, like I said, a few, you know, eight to nine months to really qualify properly and take our time to really get to know the new teammates, to, to merge them with the old teammates, and move forward. Definitely. Well, you're getting set to face Panama in two international friendlies on October 21st and the 25th to be exact. How have yeah. those preparations been going? It's been great. The new the new staff is, you know, world class. Um, we have, I think, eight, yes, seven to nine-ish, eight staff members that are very, very high level I think I've learned more within, you know, 10 days of just being with them about, you know, from sports psych to the actual tactical, technical side of the game with our assistant coach to, you know, taking care of our bodies and, you know, the, the new GPS trackers. We've been able to really use those resources, like I said, to prepare, you know, even better this time. So what's the mood like among the senior footballers in the camp as you're getting set to, you know, play your first match, your international friendly against Panama, and you'll be at home? Yeah, it's a vibe. <laughs> We're a lot of fun. It's, it's great to be back with, you know, some teammates. I'm getting ready to fly there on Sunday. So, you know, some of my teammates that haven't been there, you know, in eight to nine years, I get to, you know, reunite with them. So it's a vibe. It's, it's light. It's fun. We always have a great time. Uh, we have a ton of energy, and I know that we're going to be able to channel that into you know these these two games of Panama, which is a great opponent. And I think once you enjoy what you do, there you always reap the results, you know, good results. Once you enjoy exactly what you're doing with the people that you're doing it with. Yeah. But well, Lauren, there'll be no fans due to the pandemic and you know the COVID nineteen restrictions in TNT. Do you see this affecting the ladies in any way? We all know the importance and the crucial role home crowd support plays in any sport. Yeah, it's gonna. It's obviously gonna affect everything. It's it's just gonna be different. You know, you don't have fans screaming at you. So I think there's a positive and a negative. But the great thing is, Panama has to play with no fans as well. I've always been taught that, you know, just because it's raining doesn't mean like, oh, we lost the game because it was raining and it was raining for both teams. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's no excuse. So yes, while it will be different, it's very important to stay focused. And honestly, we might even be more focused with, you know, fans not screaming at us, whether they're excited or upset. <laughs> so um, oh. it will be different, uh, but it is the way of the world right now. Yeah, good way to look at it. Well, if you had to tell me the main strength of this TNT squad, what would you say? experience there's a lot of experienced players that are coming back which is the most 
you know, incredible things. So when you look at new players coming into the system, younger players coming into the system, you've got all these, you know, eight to nine players that are in the core that have been in the team for 11 to 18 years that can now pass down a lot of knowledge. And we can say, hey, these are the experiences that we've had. This is what we need to look out for. This is what we need to be prepared for. Yeah, and if it's one thing, women's football had us really busy in the newsroom this week because apart from the coach leaving, we had news about CONCACAF and the World Cup qualifiers that have now been shifted from November this year to February 2022. Are you pleased seeing that now you have more time to prepare? Yes, absolutely. Especially personally, just coming back out of retirement after, you know, three years, I always want more time. We always want more time to prepare. Now, is it a bigger gap? Yes, I'm hoping that, you know, the Federation does have some funds to do some type of, you know, smaller camp or, you know, a four of us can get together in December or January, uh, but it's always great to have more time. I I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure your teammates are too. Any final yeah. words for the Trinidad and Tobago football loving public that will be cheering you on when you face Panama in the first international friendly come next week? Yeah, I would just say try to tune in if you can. Please support us. Um, the players are, you know, sacrificing a lot, families, money, careers, jobs to come back into the system or to come into the system for the first time. So make sure you support us and, um, you know, just just show us a bunch of love because that's, you know, at the end of the day, we do this not just for ourselves, but for our country, for our fans and for the people that love us. So please show your support, share the links if you broadcast it and um, we'll, we'll be working our butts off. Lauren, it has been a great pleasure chatting with you on this week's In Case You Missed It. I'm wishing you best of luck in the upcoming friendlies and I'll definitely be rooting for you as Trinidad and Tobago attempt to qualify for the World Cup. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, that's a wrap for this week's In Case You Missed It. Be sure to like, share and comment and let me know what you think about this week's topics. Stay safe and I'll see you next week.